Hey what's up everybody, welcome back. I'm James and you're watching Blue Dog Aquatics. Today we are going to be talking about the Savannah Monitor. Now, a couple of things. The Savannah Monitor is actually native to the savannas of the Eastern and South Africa. Now, you may be wondering, oh, do I want one of these as a pet? Well, I had one come in my possession and I've had him for only a few months. Let's see if we can get a good shot of him. Dip in here. Yep, there's his face. We'll show some other videos of him eating, so stay tuned for that. Yep, he's tucked back in his little hole there. Uh, we'll talk about his substrate here. Uh, now, a couple of things with this is you want to make sure that they have hides. Places where Savannah monitors, or well, any monitor, they like to burrow, they like to dig. Uh, I just changed this water this morning, and look how dirty it is because he likes to throw everything in it. So I'm going to have to do it again later today. But that's the price of owning a Savannah monitor. Now, a couple of things. Um, you always want to make sure that they have big areas where they can climb up, get next to the lights. This is just a whole bunch of chipwood mixed with, uh, the substrate is, it's chipwood mixed with moss, mixed with dirt, mixed with uh, a couple other things. And that's just so that he can dig around and enjoy himself as a monitor. Uh, we got a couple of hides there for him. Now, you also want to make sure that they have a big enough water area. Like I said, apologize for the dirty water. That was clean <laughs> about an hour ago. So. You want to make sure that they have clean water for drinking and then also for soaking. Um, the Savannah Monitor does like to lay in the water just uh, to absorb. Um, now, the size, they're, they're tan and gray in color. Um, they have a little bit of pa uh, a pattern on their backs. But the big things with Savannah Monitors is they got a nice nasty set of sharp teeth on them. Now, as an adult, their teeth won't kill you, but it may make you very sick. Uh, as well as the uh, claws tearing you up, and when they get bigger, their tails have a big punch to them. Now, they can range in size anywhere from four and a half feet to six feet to even bigger uh, as they get older. This guy right here that I have is eight months and he's eight inches so he's getting big fast right now he's on a 40 gallon breeder uh, we're in the process of building him a larger enclosure I've had him since he was about four inches so he was very very tiny he's still considered a baby now we do have key factors up here we have the UVB light for him to get natural sunlight we also have a double dome here with a heat lamp and a night lamp. Now their temperatures uh, can vary in an aquarium and it, their attitudes can as well. Um, the temperature of the Savannah monitor that you want is you want to strive for 85 to 90 degrees and these Zoomed lights hit that. Um, their basking areas uh, which I do have a basking bulb in there it's Apparently burned out this morning but I will address that uh, but you want that to be about 94 to 100 degrees um, and then at nighttime we have this one right here is the night bulb 
and you want temper and everything else shuts off so you want that temperature to be about 74 to 78 degrees now uh, they do like fresh drinking water daily so that's why like I said just cleaned that out this morning and <laughs> they love to uh, get all dirty you can see in this corner maybe I can get a better shot of that he's been digging all this morning and he's always making new tunnels and uh, hiding around so there was a couple of times I actually thought he got out but I'm like that's not even possible but he was completely dug underneath all the substrate um, you want to make sure to soak them as well in a tub uh, at least twice a week uh, this area right here is big enough where he can soak but I still like to take him out and soak him um, I, I apologize that he's hiding right now uh, in a second here I'll, I'll get him out now what they like to eat is insects they're they're carnivores by nature but the biggest thing with savannah monitors is or really any monitor is them getting overweight uh, we can move this and take a peek at him there he is he's got that nice long tail on him Let's see if we can zoom in does not like being bothered. So let's see if we can get a closer look at him. There he is. He's a good boy. Um, he's got a bit of an attitude issue. He's about eight months old. So, uh, we're working on that. Yep, see, he sees my microphone and he thinks it's food, and it's not. Now, I have him associated where if I bring tongs into the aquarium, he associates that with food, and that way he doesn't associate my hand with food. Um, that way it's safe for me to take him out and give him a soak or get him checked over, make sure he's looking good. Yeah, he's just got that little void in there for him. Now, like I said, monitors get huge. This guy, full ground, at six feet, I mean, you gotta essentially have a wall of a, of a terrarium for him. Um, Unfortunately, these guys are relatively cheap. So, the bad thing about them being so cheap is everybody wants to get one. They don't realize how big they get. Now, what we do, uh, what we feed him, uh, later here in the video, I'll show you uh, the feeding session that we did with him. Uh, we gave him a good sized dubia that we dose, uh, we dusted uh, with supplements. Uh, that way he stays healthy. Um, they still need their form of calcium uh, dustings, and then we also have supplements just for monitors. Yep, he's just curious right now. Um, you can mix it up, uh, give them, uh, you can give them fruits and veggies. It's not always clear if they'll eat it. Now, Savannah monitors are supposed to be the nicest of all the monitors. I don't know if I exactly believe that because most monitors are kind of mean, but. This is my first monitor. Um, like I said, he was a rescue, came to me, the guy had a brain injury, couldn't even remember he had a Savannah monitor, so we've been working to get this guy back up to weight and back up to health. He's been doing really good, he's a really good eater, and he's curious about everything. He'll sit there and watch me walk around as I'm working with all the other tanks. Um, like I said, these guys get huge, so, I think at big box stores you can, well, actually I haven't even seen one of these at a big box store, but normally if you buy them online, you're gonna get them as a juvenile, so uh, a little bit smaller than him. And let's see if I can do it. There you go, you can see his color pattern. And see those lovely claws. That big tail, man, those that thing can do some damage. 
And uh, the thing with these is, is they're affordable now. But the thing also is these guys, they're kind of like chameleons in the aspect of they're up front. Well, okay, I take that back. Chameleons up front cost is kind of expensive. But the Savannah, I mean, you can buy a juvenile for 150 bucks, which would be a little bit smaller than him. And then uh, you can. Uh, And then as they get bigger, they're kind of more pricey. Uh, I've seen monitors go all the way up into the uh, 100 or I'm sorry, 2000, 2500 dollars range, depending on the type of monitor. And uh, that's the thing is people buy them young because they're like, oh, they're so cute. And then don't realize how expensive because then you got to build them a custom enclosure to support their large body. Um, now, if you live in a cold air area like Nebraska, you don't want to do that. Uh, you don't want to have one of these guys. Actually, there's a lot of states that uh, these guys are even illegal in. Um, I believe Florida is one of them. Um, if you can build them, if, if your state allows it or you have the proper permits um, and your state can allow and allows it, I would recommend building them an inside enclosure for the uh, uh, for like winter time or whatever and then uh, they can be outside during the summer so they can get that natural environment back off of him and uh, like I said the upfront cost of just buying him isn't terrible but paying for all the additional as he gets bigger and these guys man the appetite on these guys is unreal um, they eat and eat and eat and eat and that's the big thing with them as to why they get overweight is because they'll keep eating they don't care uh, most of the time in the Savannah Desert they will run from one side to the other looking for small prey or what have you or insects and so uh, they're used to getting in the food when they can uh, we'll go ahead and put his uh, his hide back so he can hide again. Oh, don't bite it. Yeah, see, now he's checking it out, making sure that I'm not not mess. I didn't mess with it. See that big tail back there? And he's only gonna get so much bigger. video so far make sure to like and subscribe uh, to our channel uh, we got new stuff uh, now doing it every Monday and Friday so we have constantly new husbandry videos or uh, new incoming arrivals and stuff like that uh, also drop us a comment down below if you do like this video and check us out uh, our, our website is actually almost done uh, it's supposed to be up in the next couple of days, so check that out at www.bluedogaquatics.org as well as our Facebook and Instagram at Blue Dog Aquatics. Now, we'll leave him alone. We'll go ahead and shut this up for him, and I hope you like the rest of the video. Stay tuned. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about what we're prepping for for uh, Aquashella Chicago and hope you enjoyed the video.